In this video, we will discuss configuring pipe networks. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 1202 configuring pipe networks.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the working with this dataset video. When configuring a pipe network, there are many settings and styles that you must take into consideration. Before developing pipe networks, we need to look at pipe structure, styles, and rules. So let's go ahead and just expand the pipe category and we'll just look at one pipe style. And the whole purpose of the pipe style, if I double click this, is to basically tell Civil 3D how it should display and what it should display in each of the different views. Again, as mentioned in the overview video, the purpose of pipe networks in Civil 3D is purely for a display aspect. You do not do any of your drainage or storm sanitary design within Civil 3D. So we have the plan tab for plan specific graphics, profile tab, and section tab. And then the display tab is used to define what layer and what components should be turned on in the different views, plan, model, profile, and section. The same types of styles are also defined in the structure. So we'll go and look at one of the structures here, let's say a catch basin. And notice how the tabs are very similar. So when your view is a 3D orientation, you can actually use the 3D part to show the actual model. Because remember, Civil 3D pipe network objects are actually parametric models. If I go to the plan, you can have it display as a block, as you can see here, or you could actually use the outer part boundary if you wanted to. This is useful for objects that you want to use the outline for that aren't standard blocks or circles. Profile, this is display the model's boundary. Section, and then the display tab again to define in what view direction, plan, model, profile, section, what objects or subcomponents should go on what layers. There's also something called rules. And what pipe and structure rules are for is they control how the pipes and structures are placed on the assigned surface. As pipes and structures are added to the model, the rules are applied and automatically placed based on the rules associated to their specific part. Again, you will most probably use Autodesk Storm and Sanitary Analysis for your design and then bring the data into Civil 3D. But let's look at some of the rules that you can define. So I just have a basic rule set here. And within the rules tab, you can define specific rules, cover and slope, length check, etc. To add a rule, simply click on the add rule option here, and then you select the rule name. So if let's say we wanted a pipe to pipe match as far as a drop value, you can't edit it here, but as soon as you click okay, you can then edit it within this dialog box. You can also move rules up and down based on priority if you'd like to. And of course you can delete rules to remove them. Again, this will just get the pipe network placed generally and then you would use storm and sanitary analysis for your actual invert locations and rim elevations. There are also rules available for structures. I'll double click basic, and if we go to the rules, you have rules like pipe drop across structure, maximum pipe size check, and again, if you wanna add a rule, simply click on the add rule. You can even set a sump depth if you'd like to. So how does Civil 3D bring all this together? It brings all these together in what's called pipe networks. And then within the pipe networks, you can define a parts list. Again, as far as the actual catalog itself, if you go to the create design panel, set pipe network catalog, this is where you tell AutoCAD Civil 3D where to point to the actual catalog, which is actually a folder full of DWG and XML files that define what the parts are. Then you create a parts list that will think of it as a store to only select the specific pipe network objects that you might want to select pertaining to a specific kind of pipe network. Let's go ahead and look at the storm sewer one. I'll simply double click here. And then within a network part list, you will have four tabs, information, which is just the name, pipes, structures, and then a summary tab. So of course the pipes tab is where you add in pipes. Well, right now all we have is concrete pipes. And if you look here, this is actually giving it the name of the pipe as well as what style to use, what rules, render material for any kind of rendering, as well as a pay item that you may want to associate to the actual pipe that will automate quantities for you. If I want to add anything, when in doubt, right click. So on the storm sewer category, I'll right click and add a part family. Let's say I wanna add in an HDPE pipe. So I'll just click on HDPE pipe, 
And then notice as you click on these, you will actually see a 3D graphic of the actual pipe. I'll click OK. And then notice how there's no sizes added. So you have to again right click on here and click Add Part Size. And then if let's say I want to add all the sizes, I'll just simply add all the sizes. One thing I want to point out is do not be thrown by the fact that there's a hazing coefficient, manning coefficient, etc. This is simply for labeling. All right. So you can actually put this value in the label. The pipe objects and the structure objects do not use these in any way, shape, or form. I'll click OK. And now I have all the HTTPE pipes in this pipe network to select from. Well, let's say as per our design for Storm Sewer, we're never going to have anything above 24 inches. I can select here, hold the Shift key down, and then simply right click and delete. And those are now removed from the HTTPE pipe section. I can also click in here. And if let's say I want to have this as my description, I can do so as well. So I'm just going in here and putting 3 inch HTTPE. I would do the same thing for the rest of these. As you can see, it does take a little bit of time, but once it's set up, then it's done for you. You can also select above here to globally change any of the styles, rules, render, or pay item. So if let's say I wanted to change the render material to a concrete type material, I can click up here, select this from the drawing, and this has to be placed in the drawing as a material. And just like that, I now have applied that. Structures work in a very similar fashion. So I can just right click on here, and click Add Part Family. Let's say we want to add in a concrete rectangular winged head wall. I'll toggle this on, click OK, and I'm going to right click on that part and click Add Part Size. Notice how you can select in here and actually choose from the different part sizes. So if let's say I wanted to just add in specific ones, I would simply navigate to the specific size that I want to add, click OK, and then I have that specific size. If I want to add another one, I can simply right click on this and choose add part size again. And let's choose a different size like so. And now you have another size. Again, if you want to actually change the way this looks, you can change this here. So let's say for this head wall, I want this to be a head wall style. So right now it's defined as sanitary sewer manhole. And I'll pick head wall, which will actually show the outline of the model itself. Random material will do the same thing here. We'll change this to concrete, cast in place, click OK. And if I had a pay item, and as long as I have a pay item file associated to my drawing, I could pick here and then actually choose the pay item and it would automatically grab it, which again is pretty cool automation. Click OK. You now have completed your initial setup to creating a parts list that you will then use to create your pipe network objects.